Welcome back to another edition of the Wiccan Conservative. I apologize for this video. It was supposed to be out earlier, but unfortunately I had a major technical difficulty getting this um, to show up properly on YouTube. And after downloading multiple apps and toying with the font and playing with the images, I finally got what I hope is an acceptable version to present to you folks. Uh, unfortunately, you might have to turn your screen so that it is in uh, portrait mode to view the contents of this video. So I apologize for the length of time that it took me and the inconvenience, but without further ado, here are the George Papadopoulos transcripts. So I would like to first remind everybody who George Papadopoulos is. If we remember, George Papadopoulos was hired as the foreign policy manager for the Trump campaign. And uh, the timeline of charges set against George kind of reads like this per the uh, official FBI document uh, against George Papadopoulos. The charges against George are possession of knowledge of dirt on Hillary Clinton in the form of thousands of emails while consulting for the campaign. Uh, they claim he lied about the status of a foreign contact that met with him in Moscow and wanted to arrange a meeting with the Trump campaign. They claim that he sought to use a Russian female national to gain access to Russian government officials. And they claim that he impeded the investigation by lying. So once you read those charges that are levied against him and compare and contrast with the actual transcripts from the wiretapping that was done on George Papadopoulos, you get a bigger picture of what the campaign uh, was doing and how they were conducting their foreign affairs and what the FBI was investigating um, prior to coming out publicly speaking about um, the investigation of uh, the possibility of uh, Russia hacking the DNC and Hillary Clinton's email server. The timeline of events, according to the FBI, um, are stated in this manner. They state that in early March, George Papadopoulos is hired by the Trump campaign. We narrowed that down to actually be March 6th that George was hired by the Trump campaign. On March 14th, there is a meeting with a professor. Uh, if you follow Dan Bongino, you might be able to, to identify who this person is. But for the purpose of what we have in these documents, we are going to refer to him as the professor. On March uh, 21st, George Papadopoulos was named the uh, foreign policy advisor for the Trump campaign. On March 24th, George Papadopoulos was supposed to have met the Russian female national Olga Vindagravia. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce her last name. I'm not good at Russian, so we'll just call her Olga. Uh, on March 31st, there was a national security meeting that George announced publicly that he could uh, possibly have connections that would get Trump in to meet with uh, Vladimir Putin. And from April 28th to the 25th, the FBI claims that there were incriminating emails sent in efforts to gain audience with uh, Russian government officials between uh, George Papadopoulos, the Russian female national, and the professor, insinuating that he was attempting to pressure these people into getting Trump to sit down with Vladimir Putin. On April 26th, supposedly uh, it is alleged that George Papadopoulos met in London and was actually told 
about the Russians having the dirt on Hillary Clinton in the form of thousands of emails. From April 27th to April 30th, the FBI claims that there were more incriminating emails and more pressure from George to his contacts in an effort to get Trump to Russia to talk to Russia and um, do this secretly or under the radar without letting anybody know about it. So those are the official charges and the official timeline of the FBI. With that being said, I would like to make it known that it is also easily searchable to find out that uh, according to the Washington Post, they ran an article back in 2015, late 2015, uh, stating that they knew about the leak in the DNC and they also knew about the hack of um, Hillary's emails. And on March 16th, Wikilinks actually opened up the DNC email server and started dropping uh, tidbits of information from those uh, emails that they hacked and, and got a hold of. So it falls in between the start date for uh, Papadopoulos and the actual time that the FBI states that Papadopoulos was told about these emails, letting everybody know that it was only 10 days after Papadopoulos had joined the campaign that Wikilinks actually started leaking this information. So the very first big question that jumped out at me was how did Papadopoulos plan to use the dirt that was leaked by the the Wikilinks if it was already public knowledge uh, or becoming steadily public knowledge on its own. So, you know, how does the FBI say that Papadopoulos was after this information that was already becoming public? It just, it, to me, it doesn't really make very much sense. So, that really kind of threw me off. Um, also in the timeline, they say that from mid June to August, George Papadopoulos was relentless on his pursuit of an off the record meeting between the, uh, Trump and, uh, Putin administration. And they acknowledge in their statements that the trip to Russia never happened. So they know that Papadopoulos did not obtain his goal of getting Trump to Russia to meet with Putin, nor did he get to Russia to lead with Putin, which also contradicts the regarding statements in, in the arrest warrant or the charges filed against uh, Mr. Papadopoulos and, and what he actually pled guilty to. So back into the, um, you know, FBI statements that they claim to be false the false statements that George Papadopoulos supposedly gave to the FBI. Uh, in January 27th, 2017, George actually agreed to meet voluntarily with the FBI for an interview. Um, he says that, or I'm sorry, the FBI claims that the meeting with the professor uh, was before he became part of the Trump campaign. George, George said that he met with this professor prior to becoming a part of the Trump campaign. And the FBI determined that that was false. Now, George did join the team on March 6th, and the meeting happened on March 14th. You're now interviewing him almost a year later. So having those dates, you know, slightly skewed or maybe not being uh, 110% aware of when you started as opposed to when the meeting was and, and the dates being so close in time, they nailed him on that. They said that uh, he knew after he learned that he would be a foreign policy advisor that he was going to be getting dirt on Hillary Clinton. So that was another thing that really kind of stuck out to me. Uh, he was announced on March 21st, and they claim 
that the professor and and the meeting ha- that happened to tell him about the dirt on Hillary Clinton was in April. But as I said before, the WikiLeaks uh, server leak was already set up online and the intelligence agencies already knew about that in late 2015. So the dates don't match up very well there. Also, they they claimed that Papadopoulos minimized the communications with the professor and himself, and they insist that George was under the impression that the professor had ties to Putin and would get him closer to a meeting between Trump and Vladimir Putin. The FBI claims that uh, Papadopoulos failed to mention the Russian female that was introduced to him by the professor and omitted emails seeking the audience with Putin or the Russia government. Needless to say, I could not find verification of these emails. I could only find the um, declassified documents that I'm showing now. They claim that he lied about when he met the Russian female and the email content that they discussed, what they discussed in their emails. And what led up to his arrest was, uh, you know, he was re-interviewed in February 16th, 2017 with his counsel. After that, he deleted his Facebook. He changed his cell phone number and was ultimately arrested on July 27th. Uh, pleading guilty in October, in October, 2017, uh, approximately five months later. So if you look at the, uh, information that's on your screen, you'll see the conversations between, um, you know, the confidential human source and George Papadopoulos, what they talked about, how they discussed certain things and the consistency of his testimony uh, throughout the process. Now, these recordings were made in October 2016, right before the election, and the follow-up uh, interviews were made in January 2017 after the election, and the follow-up to the follow-up interviews was in February 2017. So I highly encourage you guys to go look at the actual information to actually read the transcripts. As I said before, the transcripts are way too long to get into um, on any given day for a recording. And I didn't want to uh, lead you guys down a, a long drawn out path for information that you can seek out yourself. So I will leave links to that in the description box. And I hope that this gives you a little bit of a break from the crazy happenings of, you know, current events. And, um, you know, I will continue down this Spygate path to bring you more information because this is just the first set of declassified documents, starting with the George Papadopoulos um, wiretapping and information. But there's a lot more. Uh, you can follow along with me on the um, justice.gov website and see what's coming in in my next video. So I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one.